Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. in. Welcome. Welcome to Mystery Theater. I'm Hyman Brown. Are you ready for us? We trust you are because we propose to deal with the most obscure of subjects, that of death. Some people never speak of death, while others can't stop talking about it. We have chosen in the next hour or so to consider it calmly, perhaps philosophically, with a minimum of agitation, and naturally to arrive finally at the most fascinating question of all. What, if anything, comes after? What comes after, Joe? After what? After we've, you know, packed it in. Nobody knows, Harry. I know. Oh, Harry. I'm going to go on, Joe. I am. Somehow, somewhere. Harry Cantor is going to go on. Our mystery drama, Appointment in Uganda, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars William Redfield. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Harry Cantor lies flat on his back in a hospital bed, staring at the ceiling. Across the room, a sturdy middle-aged nurse sits in an armchair. It's very quiet. The machine next to Harry's bed makes no noise, though its dancing lines are carefully recording every beat of his heart. Is, is it all right to come in, nurse? Are you Mr. Burroughs? Joe? Yeah, it's me, Harry. Oh. Dr. Klein said it's okay for five minutes. I'm, I'm his business partner, Joe Burroughs. Oh, he's been crying for you. Come in. How do you feel, Harry? I almost died, Joe. Yeah, I know, your heart. Never been sick a day in my life, and now this. Oh, you're going to be fine, Mr. Cantor. Long as you do what the doctor says. I lie here, and I think... Joe... Hmm? Do you believe in reincarnation? You mean coming back as somebody else? Yeah. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Uh, you two gentlemen mind if I go out for some coffee? No, no, don't go. Don't you leave me. Well, don't Mr. Leave me. Burroughs will be here. Yeah, I'll be here, Harry. What does he know about heart attacks? Well, you're off critical, Mr. Cantor. Long as you don't excite yourself, you'll be okay. I really need a break, Mr. Burroughs. Uh, five minutes? What I really need is five weeks. Joe, sit down. I got to talk to you about the crypt. The, the, the crypt? You're going to get well, Harry. I got to have it ready. Harry, lots of guys have had heart attacks and go on to a ripe old day. I got to be ready. Now write this down. I want it marble. Marble from Italy, that good kind. C C Carrara, that's the best. Okay, then that's what I want. Write it down. Uh, okay, now, um, how big a crypt did you plan on? Big. Very big. But you're going to be there all alone, Harry. And and uh, you're not going to be moving around exactly. You never know. Make it eight by ten, the very least. Uh, what about shelves? Shelves? Shelves for what? Well, it's my understanding. People do have shelves put in crypts, you oh. know, for uh, loved ones who, uh, you know, later on when the time comes. It's a nice idea. Who would I put on the shelves? Who... Oh, unless you want to No, 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 not, not me. But well, you're no. my friend. You're my partner. No, I was thinking your mother, maybe. Oh, my mother. She hasn't even been to see me. Why should I give her a shelf? Well, Bernice... Bernice hasn't even sent me a get well card. Well, she's called up every day, Harry. I, I happen to know that. So, what's the phone call? She's at work all day, you know. She's through by five. Harry, this is the first day you've been off the critical list. I'm the first person who's been let to see you. Well, 
She could have tried. Look, when they let you out of here, why don't you take a nice trip? You know, you could take Bernice with you. I already did that, Joe, 15 years ago. You could go to Europe. That's where I took Bernice. Six countries in six weeks. Terrible. And no cottage cheese. California. How about California? They have cottage cheese. Joe, while I was lying here, I had an idea for the business. I want to tell you. You just had a heart attack and you're thinking about business? Gee whiz, Harry. Well, what else have I got to think about? Well, I don't know. Think about being reincarnated or something. Oh, nuts to that. Now, look, here's what I figured out, Joe. Lots of people are turning to natural sponges, sponges, you know? And I know where we can get our hands on some very cheap. Very cheap. Labor costs are practically nothing. These peasants... They die for him, see? They die. Uh, Harry, my time is just about up. I, I, I really got to get going. I'll, 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 I'll call the nurse. I'll, I'll get in touch with your mother. Don't go, Joe. I'll tell Bernice that you're coming along. Joe, oh. Joe, I just thought of something. What? For the crypt. Yeah? I want music. Perpetual music. Oh, yeah, well, uh, what kind of music, Harry? All the good old songs. Stardust. The moon comes over the mountain. Dardanella. 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 Harry, I Dardanella. don't Dardanella. know. Oh, are you my friend? Well, are you I... my partner? I want music. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll look into it, Harry. You'll see to it? I, I, I gotta go. I'll, One I'll, I'll night back. of love. Yeah, but... Barney, Google. Uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, there you are. Well, everything all right, Mr. Burroughs? Well, I tried not to upset him about anything. He seems to be fine. Good. I had a telegram from his mother, but I didn't show it to him. It wasn't exactly a telegram for him. She sent it to me. He never mentioned having a mother. Oh. Matter of fact, he never mentioned anybody but you. Yeah, well, see, I wired his mother right after the attack. Yes. And, well, here, I've been carrying her reply around with me in my pocket ever since. See, here, here, here it is. I, I didn't know whether to show it to him. You know, he might take it the wrong way. You want me to read it? Yeah, please. Uh, Harry is too mean to die, and tell him I said so. Yeah, see, his mother's kind of a joker at times. You ask me, she's one smart old lady. That man in there is too mean to die. Uh, Mrs. Kenner? Hold your horses. Uh, I'll be right there. It's, it's, it's Joe Burrows, Mrs. Kenner. Oh, how are you, Joe? It takes me a little time to maneuver the old wheelchair. I got some tea ready for you, so come and sit down. Boy, you sure get around in that thing, Mrs. Tanner. Oh, well, practice makes pretty good. Oh, yeah, come on, sit down. Oh, yeah, thanks. I saw Harry yesterday, Mrs. Tanner. They say he, as long as he doesn't excite himself, he's going to pull through in great shape. I, um, I didn't show him your telegram. <laughs> Harry knows what I think of him. Yeah. Have a cookie. Oh, you bake these? No, no, Bernice did. Mmm, they're good. You, you see a lot of Bernice? Oh, she stops by three, four times a week, does errands for me. Oh, yeah. Nice girl, Bernice. Mm. Simple-minded, but very nice. What did you talk about? Well, we, um, we talked about the crypt. Oh, that crypt. Yeah, well, it means a lot to him. You know, Harry's never realized that death is, is just an incident. Well, it's the final incident, of course, but... Even so, just an incident. Yeah, he's thinking about reincarnation. Oh, <laughs> that's something new. Do you believe in uh, reincarnation, Mrs. Kenner? Well, it's a pretty idea. But you don't believe in it, right? Joe, what's the difference if I believe in it? That doesn't make it true. On the other hand, if it's true, it'll happen anyway. Now, now, what else did you and Harry talk about besides that, that silly crypt? Oh, not too much. I, um did bring up the question of having shelves built into the crypt. Shelves for what? Cancel checks? No, well, as a rule, you know, they're for those nearest and dearest. I mean, if that's what they want. Oh, uh-huh. it's not what I want. Shut up in a tomb with Harry for eternity? Oh, no, no. No, I- I'm going to be placed gently in the ground up at Fargus Falls. That's where I was happy with Harry's father. I still have the house, you know. <sighs> well, I, uh, I suppose I ought to go see Harry at the hospital. Oh, I think he'd like that. Uh, he won't like it, but he'll hate it if I don't. Yeah, well, uh, should I tell him that... Well, tell him I'll get over there soon. And Joe... Yeah? Tell him... Tell him I'm sorry. Sorry for everything. <laughs> Thank you.
Oh, that's probably Joe. Hello, Mr. Burroughs. How is he? Oh, he's coming along fine. Come on in. So, um, how are you, Harry? Uh, as well as can be expected. That's what they all say around here. Yeah, well, I, I saw your mother. She, um, she said she'll be in to see you real soon. Yeah. Uh, how soon is real soon? Well, today, maybe. What about the crypt? Yo, um, Harry, what are we going to talk about, the crypt? Well, what, what about the crypt, Joe? How many times have I got to ask you? What about it? Your, the, your mother doesn't want to be put in the crypt. Why not? She doesn't like the idea of the shelf. She wants to be buried up at Fargus Falls. No, 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 no. She can't do that. She likes it there. Joe, that ten acres was made to order for a development. Oh. Or it will be in another ten years. Right now, it's a little too far out, but in another ten years, I mean, I got it all worked out in my head. Shopping center, parking lot, the whole schmear. Yeah, Harry, I, um, I talked to the cemetery about the crypt. They said it's okay about the size. Well, of course it's okay. And the Italian marble, I think I know where I can get that. Joe, what are you holding out on me? The cemetery plays music regularly. There's always some kind of nice, soft music no, on No, no, I want my own music. That's one of the main reasons for a crypt, so I can have everything my own way. Take it easy, Mr. Cantor. Now, Joe, you go back and tell them I gotta have it my way, or the whole deal's off. You'd better leave, Mr. Burroughs. Yeah, better you leave. tell them I got the money, and I gotta have... Huh, I gotta have it... Oh, uh, out of my way. Is he, uh, is he having... Yes, he is. Uh, Push that emergency button. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Klein, 407 on the double, heart emergency. I'd better leave. Hand me that tray with the hypodermic needles. Oh, Harry? Clear the way, lady. The emergency heart unit is coming in. There is no more satisfying and awesome sight than a group of people doing what they have been trained to do, what they do best. Their faces do not matter or their shapes, or their colors, or their accents. They are professionals at their work, and they are working together in harmony and understanding. Mystery Theater will be back with Act Two. At the close of our first act, Harry Cantor had just suffered his second, his most severe heart attack. Actually, his heart had stopped completely. He had no pulse, he had no breath, he had no life. Where, you may ask, was the soul of Harry Cantor? Where had it gone? Where is it now? A pertinent and awesome question. One we shall now attempt to answer. now, Kalen. All right. That's it. Good. Good. It's your baby. A male. Oh, well. At least he looks healthy. Come on, little one. Up on your feet. Come on now. Up, up, up. Up on your feet. On your feet. Are you my mother? I'm your mother's sister. I'm Bombine. Hmm. Where's my mother? She's cleaning up. Birth is a messy business. No. Come on now. Time to stand up. Hmm. You have such beautiful eyelashes, Bombine. Hmm. And how tall you are. Oh, just average for an elephant. Now stand up. Hmm. What are all those others doing? Standing around waiting for you to be born. Do elephants always do that? Well, you didn't think they only did it for you. Mm. Now, they're getting impatient. We've got to get going, so get up. Mm. Kaylin, come get your new child on his feet. Oh, little Abu. No. Come on. Get up, little Abu. Mm. Get up and eat. Mm. <laughs> That's mm. it, little mm. one. Mm. Feel around mm. till you find the milk. Mm. I think you've born a stupid one, Kalen. Mm. Oh, what's the matter, little son? My my nose gets in the way. Oh. That's not your nose. Well, tuck it up between your ears. Mm. He's not stupid, Bambi. Mm. All newborns have trouble with their little trunks. Mm. Well, the herd is getting impatient. The flies and mosquitoes are very bad today. Oh, I could stand a good swim myself. 
<laughs> Are you through, little Abu? We must move on. Is that what you're going to call him? Abu? It's just a nice name, don't you think? <laughs> Very nice, yes. Well, Abu... Let's get going. Mm. Well, where are we going? Into the forest, Abu, where there's food for all. Now, I shall walk on one side of you, and Bambine will walk on the other. And we will go with the herd into the forest. I am Abu, uh -huh. and I am an elephant. <laughs> What are we looking for, Mother? <laughs> Food, silly. And water. Well, why are we all going in the same direction? Why don't you and I and Bombine go off on our own? Now, what would be the point of that? Well, we might find something. Something good. And we could keep it for ourselves. <laughs> what would be the point of that? Why, why then we'd have it. Well, I repeat. I told you he was stupid, Kayleen. Oh, well, maybe he's just... Ah, Bambi. No, I mean, Mother, if, say, we found water, if we didn't tell the others, then they would have to come to us to find out where it is, and we wouldn't tell them unless... Unless what? Well, uh, unless they did something for us. Like what? Oh, worked for us or gave us something or, well, at the very least, they'd respect us. They'd think we were very superior and wonderful. We are all very superior and wonderful, Abu. But the three of us would be more superior and more wonderful, don't you see? Oh, what I see is that you have a lot to learn, Abu. And a lot to unlearn. Where do you get these peculiar ideas, Abu? Mm, they sort of pop into my mind. Abu, you must understand that... Elephants have the marvelous gift of finding water. Mm -hmm. And we find it not just for ourselves, but for all the other animals, too. All of them? All. It is our responsibility. Why is it our responsibility? Because we are so good at it. I don't follow that at all. <laughs> uh, Bumbeen, I'm going to bring down this tree... Now, I can't quite reach the leaves at the top, and they look so delicious. Bombine, are we friends with all the animals? What do you mean by friends? Well, it's not possible, is it, to love them all? Oh, you talk very strangely for an elephant. We have due and proper respect for all the animals, as they have for us. Does that answer your question? Oh, are they afraid of us? Well, I don't think so. Are we afraid of them? Of course not. Not any of them? Well, there's one you should look out for until you have grown larger. The one with the stripes. The tiger. Oh. When the tiger is very hungry, he sometimes attacks a very young elephant for food. Oh, oh that's terrible. Oh, just you stay close to your mother and me. Whoa. What, what will you do if a, tri if a tiger tries to hurt me? Your mother will pick the tiger up and dash him against a tree. Then I shall sit on him. Understand? Ooh, what a good arrangement. There now. Your mother has knocked down the big tree. Ah, come. But all the little animals are eating, too. The elands and the dick dicks, everybody. Why not? Well, but it's our tree. Who said it's our tree? It's part of the forest. Come on now. I'm hungry. <laughs> mother, uh, where is my father? around somewhere. How bet I know where he is? I know he's at the head of the line. He's the leader. Oh, oh Bambine. Did you hear that? Mm. Abu says his father is leading the herd. I told you he's a strange child. <laughs> well, why shouldn't he be leading the herd? I'll bet my father is the strongest, the wisest, the cleverest, the most handsome. The oh, most... do shut up, Abu. I won't shut up. Mm. Mm. Mother, Bambine hit me with her trunk. She had every right. And it won't be the last time. Every elephant in the herd has the right and the duty to punish you when you get too impudent and talk of things you know nothing about. Well, all I said was my father is probably our leader. Our leader, my dear little stupid, is a female. Is it female? The oldest, the wisest female of us all. But that's wrong. 
<laughs> Mother. I have been cursed with a stupid male child, Bundine. Pardon me if I say I told you so. No, but wait, wait. If the male elephants don't lead, what do they do? Oh, let's see. Well, they sort of hang around. They are very agreeable. Very companionable. And then there's something else. Every now and then, I I remember your father. At least, I, I think I do. It, it was quite a long time ago. He and I were companions for a while. A long while. And then suddenly, one day, he, he seemed different to me. More than a companion. We stroked each other with our trunks. Something we'd never done before. And gave each other little pinches with our mouths. We thought we were only playing. And then... Uh, and then? Well, then what? <laughs> well, then I noticed that his ears were flapping. Flapping wildly. And his tail was whisking back and forth. <laughs> I was surprised. <laughs> and then I felt that my ears were flapping and my tail was whisking crazily. Oh, oh my, I was so excited. <laughs> I felt that he was the only elephant of the forest for me. And, and that I was the only elephant for him. <laughs> Oh, it was a wonderful day. It, I remember it rightly. But you must remember it. Oh, it was seasons and seasons ago, Abu. A long time. And now you are here. I, I want to meet him. Which one is he? Oh, heavens, I don't know. I'm going to find him. I'm going to ask around. If you have any sense, Abu, you'll stay here. I'm just going to join the males and talk to them. He hasn't any sense, Kaylee. Oh, the males don't care too much for young elephants, Abu. Just the same. I I want to try. Abu? Let him learn, Bumbine. Let him learn the hard way. <laughs> And, sir? Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you might be my father? You what? Uh, Kayleen is my mother. She's over there with Bombine. So? Uh, do you remember being married to my mother? Being what? Well, I mean, did you sort of keep company with her for a long time, and then one day did you start whisking her tail and flapping your ears and fall in love? Well, seems to me I remember something like that. <laughs> Uh, was it my mother you fell in love well, with? Well, how would I know? It's happened to me so many times. Many times? Many, many times. Oh, many, many, many times. How many? No. Oh, you, you hurt me. You ask too many questions. Well, I'm curious. Are you very old? I think I am. Don't you know? Well, how should I know? The flies bother me more than they once did. Sometimes I shiver. I never used to shiver. Oh, you're sick. I don't feel well, that's certain. Now go away. But I want to ask you... Why said go away? Oh. I don't want any children around me. I don't want anyone around me. I want to be myself. Mother... Bombine? Who are you talking to back there? Oh, a very old one. He didn't know how old, but he said he'd lived through many things, many, many times. And now he, he doesn't feel very well. He shivers, he said. That's old Noor. Yes, that's Noor. Very soon, now. Yes, very soon. Hmm, very soon what? Hmm, very soon what, Mother? Very soon. Old Noor will wander off into the deepest part of the forest. By himself? All by himself. Well, then what? Then we shall never see him again. Nor will anyone at all ever see him again. Nor any trace of him. Not skin, or tusk, or bone. Well, how can that be? Mother, Bombine, how can that be? Surely a tusk. Surely a bone will be left behind. Nothing. Nothing. It's the secret of the elephants, Abu. When you have grown, you will learn the secret. When? When will I? Perhaps not till the very end. Come now. It's time to bathe. Oh, that's 
to pour water on me, Mother. You've had your bath for today. <laughs> Bambine, the sky is getting dark. Oh, oh, yes. Well, I am bathed. The day is ending, Abu. Come. But I like the water. No. Pay attention when I speak to you. Oh, oh, oh. What are we going to do now? You'll see. Well, where are we going? We are not going anywhere. We are going to stand right here. Do you see the other elephants? Mm. They've all stopped bathing. Why have they? The good red circle of fire is leaving us, Abu. And the darkness is coming on. Why is it leaving? Because it is time for it to leave. Will the good red fire circle come back? When it is time for it to come back. Come now, Abu. Stand in line with us and all the others. Hurry, Abu. Don't dawdle. Mm. What? What now, Mother? Be silent. Stand still. Watch the great fire circle as it goes. Where is it going? Be quiet. But where? Hush. And watch. Oh. <laughs> mother. Please, Mother. What are we doing, Mother? Mother. Are we praying? It's quite true, according to those who have watched and studied the great elephant herds, that they stand silent and motionless facing the sun, not only in the evening when it sets, but again each morning when it rises. We're too ignorant or too far removed from our natural heritage to know just why it is that they do this. There's no obvious reason, no apparent advantage, no material gain. So perhaps the answer to Abu's question is, yes, the elephants are praying. Mystery Theater will be back shortly with Act Three of our strange tale. We left the great herd of elephants facing the setting sun in silence, except for little Abu who asked, What are we doing, Mother? Are we praying? It may very well have been. How do we know that it wasn't, that the elephants were praying for the return to life of one Harry Cantor? At least it looks that way as we return to Act Three. Back in your own little Betty Boo, Mr. Cantor? Does it feel good? Oh, Bombeen? I'm your nurse, Mr. Cantor. You remember me? Oh, uh, where's Mother? Outside. You can see her when you're stronger. How's Noor? How's Noor? Did he die? You're the one almost died. Oh, it was a near thing there. Your heart stopped for six whole seconds. Oh, it must have been more than six seconds. Well, you were in intensive care for two weeks. <gasps> Am I alive? Alive? You are alive, and you're going to go on living. Only this time, you'll do as you're told. No excitement like before. Oh. You've been very sick. Are you warm enough? I'm going to put this extra blanket over you. Oh. What happened to your eyelashes? My eyelashes? You used to have such beautiful, long eyelashes. Were they false? Mr. Cantor, I have never worn false eyelashes in my life. Or false anything else. I'm sorry, Bombine. My name is... Well, never mind. You just rest. Mm. Are we going to take a bath? You want a bath? Well, I'll ask Dr. Klein. You don't have to ask anybody. We'll just wander down to the river when it gets cool. Mr. Cantor... Just before the sun goes down. That's the beautiful time. Uh... Uh, yes. And then the big, good red circle goes away for a while. It does? Mm -hmm. And we pray. You pray. I don't know exactly what we pray for. Uh -huh. Maybe for it to come back, or maybe we just say thank you. Uh, I never knew you were religious, Mr. Cantor. I'm not. I never have been. <laughs> I don't know anything about religion. 
Well, now, do you think you could go to sleep now? I think so. And you want me to pull the blinds? No. I want to watch the sun go down. Then I'll go to sleep. Mr. Burroughs? Is he all right, nurse? Uh, uh, yes. Can we see him? Well, he's sleeping right now. Well, when he wakes up? Uh, uh, yes. But I, uh, I think I ought to tell you, he may seem a little strange. Strange? Well, oh, well, what do you mean by strange? Well, uh, different. He talks sort of funny. His speech is impaired. Brain damage. No, 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 nothing like that. Well, well then what? Well, he asked me what happened to my eyelashes. Oh, oh. Did anything happen to your eyelashes? Of course not. Then he called me Bombeen and talked about going down to the river to take a bath and praying to the big red circle. Oh, Joe, you think maybe... Maybe we should call in a psychiatrist. Well, not yet, anyway. He's, he's not strong enough. But uh, later... Uh, Mrs. Cantor, remember your son did have cardiac arrest. For six, eight seconds, his heart was not beating at all. He... He was dead? Well, uh, yes... But he's very much alive now. Oh. When I walked into that room, my... My son was dead. Now, now, Mrs. Kenton. I'll never forgive myself. <laughs> nice. Listen, when he wakes up, will you call me? Maybe I'd better go in and see him first. Yes, huh? I think maybe you had. Yeah. Then you can sort of... You, you know, prepare his mother for... For what to expect. <laughs> Is it? It's, it's me, Harry. How, how are you feeling? Why, it's Noor. Noor? Oh, Noor, you're alive. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just fine, Harry. Uh, uh, I'm fine. Oh, I was so worried. Your mother's outside. She wants to see you, too. Oh, how is she? Oh, she's fine, Harry. She's wonderful, my mother. Very oh. strict, but very wonderful. And a wonderful swimmer. Oh, I never knew that. Oh, yes. And a wonderful mother. Mm-hmm. Very strict, though. Yeah, Harry, um, maybe I'd better not stay too long. No, no, stay. I, I, I know you don't care too much for children, but I, I want you to stay. H Harry, I'm Joe. Hmm? You know, Joe Burroughs. I'm your partner. I'm your friend. You're not Noor? No. No, you don't look like Noor. I'm Joe Burroughs. Your mother's waiting to see you. Y your girl, Bernice. She'll be around later. Joe Burroughs. My partner. My friend. Right. We're, we're in the import-export business, Harry. You remember? You were talking about some kind of deal to have to do with uh, sponges. You remember before? Sponges? What? Yeah. What do we want with sponges? Yeah, well, well, nothing. You just thought if you could buy up all the sponges. Well, what for? Well, for nothing, for nothing, Harry. Absolutely nothing. You see, we are very wonderful, superior beings, Joe. We are. Therefore, we must be responsible. Act responsibly. I mean, you understand. Well, I'm not sure I do. That's because you're not an elephant. I'm not... I'm an elephant, Joe. I mean, I was an elephant, and my name was Abu. Uh, 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 when were you an elephant, Harry? For a little while. Oh. Just for a little while. Uh, uh, how was it being an elephant? Beautiful. You, you're not an elephant anymore, are you, Harry? No. No, I'm just Harry Cantor. But I'll never forget being Abu and the sun going down and all of us standing in a line. Ha Harry, ha Harry, I think I know what happened. When your heart stopped, you do know your heart stopped there for a minute, don't you? <laughs> Everything stopped. Harry, you died for a minute and Harry... You were reincarnated. You were reincarnated into an elephant. Is that possible? Well, I don't know if it's possible, but it happened. That has to be what happened. Maybe. Oh, positively. I hope you're right. Only Joe. Yeah, Harry, what? The next time my heart stopped. Oh, there isn't going to be any next time. Well, there has to be some time. And what if I'm not reincarnated into an elephant, Joe? Oh, but you would be. No, what if I was reincarnated into a tiger, Joe? And my own mother sat on me. Uh, uh, Mrs. Cantor, 
Uh, sit down here, Mrs. Kent. I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain, if I can. I'm sitting. Explain. Yeah, Mrs. Kenner, when Harry's heart stopped, he, he was what you might call deceased. Dead? Yeah, well, in a way, yes. He was, he was departed. But the emergency unit, see, they came rushing in. Oh, they knocked me down almost. I never saw such a hurry. Yeah, well, with all that, they brought Harry back to life. Oh, so he's all right again. He's all right, but... Well, so what's all the worry? Mrs. Kenner, during those seconds, while Harry was, um, was, uh, not of this world, if I may put it that oh, way... Oh, put it anyway, but get on with it. He was not Harry Cantor. He, he was... Well, for heaven's sake, Joe, what was he? He was... He was an elephant, Mrs. Kenner. Harry? An elephant? My boy, an elephant? That's what he says. Oh, how, how could that be? Uh, uh, Mrs. Kenner, hmm? it is my belief that Harry was reincarnated. See, oh. when his heart stopped and before they started it up again, Harry's soul left his body and entered into the body of an elephant. Can such things be? Well, you said yourself, Mrs. Kenner, we just... Don't know. No, 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 I don't believe it. Harry couldn't be an elephant. I don't know if he even likes elephants. Well, he does now. You know what I think, Joe. What? He dreamed he was an elephant. It was all a dream went through his head. Well, I don't know if you dream when your heart isn't beating. Well, I'll ask Dr. Klein. Well, if it was a dream, it was a very beautiful dream. So you see, Ma... Oh, I love you to call me Ma. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you see, elephants are really the kings of the jungle. Not just because they're so big, but because they have a sense of responsibility. Uh -huh. They find water for all the other animals. Uh -huh. And you know who's the leader of the elephant herd? A woman. The oldest and the wisest woman elephant. Would you believe it? <laughs> oh, oh, that's the best thing of all. And the men elephants, you know, they sort of hang around together, except every so often they get excited and flap their ears and whip their tails around. And the female elephants do too. And that means uh, they're in love. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you learned a lot in your dream, didn't you? Wasn't a dream, Mother. Wasn't a dream. I was there. I was one of them. If you say so. I was Abu. The elephant. Whatever you say, Harry. I mean, I don't mean to contradict you, Mother. Oh, that's all right. Well, you see, you don't understand because uh, you've never been an elephant. Well, I, I'm looking forward to it. Ma, hmm? I just thought of something. What happened to Abu? Did he die? Oh, oh no, I hope he didn't die. But if I was Abu, and now I'm Harry, what happened to Abu? Now, son, I think... Uh, let me see. I, I think that in a dream, a person can be all kinds of things. No, 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 Ma, that isn't hmm? it, no. Because, you see, it wasn't a dream. I was Abu. My soul, Harry Cantor's soul, entered into Abu the second he was born. And it stayed there a little while, and now it's come back into me. Harry Cantor. But it's still Abu's soul, too. And as long as I live, I'll have the soul of Abu inside me. Not a bad thing. Mother, the big red fire circle is leaving now. Oh, you mean the sun is going down? Yeah, so, uh, let's be very quiet, Mother, very quiet. Let's not talk at all. Has Fargus Falls changed much, Ma? Not much. It's been, uh, I don't know, years since I saw the old place. Well, it's pretty run down. Oh, we can fix it up. If you want to, Harry. Eh, maybe not. Maybe we'll leave it the way it is. Are the trees all there? Everyone. And the brook? Still running. Ah, uh, that's nice, that's nice. Oh, Harry, <laughs> I'm glad you're taking an interest in the old place. Interest? I'm gonna live there. You are? But what about the business? Oh, I don't know. Joe can run that. I'll sell it to him. Maybe I'll give it to him. Oh, it won't do so well without you. Joe's a very nice fellow, but oh, you were always the brains. I got different brains now, Ma. Once you're an elephant, you never forget it. Oh, did I tell you I, uh, 
Asked Bernice to marry me? Oh, you did? Oh, well, what did she say? Well, she sort of whisked her tail and flapped her ears. Uh, no, I mean, uh, she said yes. Oh. She said yes. Uh, do you think she'll like living in uh, Fargus Falls? Oh, I think she'll love it. We'd want you to live there with us, Ma. You mean that? Well, you're the oldest and the wisest, aren't you? Oh, if you say so. Hey, yeah, we're almost there, aren't we? Mm-mm. Turn left. Up ahead, it, down that little road. Oh, I can smell the woods, Ma. I can smell the water. Oh, turn here. I remember. I remember. Look, look, there's a chipmunk. Yeah, look. At, and a raccoon. <laughs> hey, a raccoon. And there's birds. That's a cardinal. Oh. I know a cardinal. Oh. I remember cardinals from way back, right? Oh, Ma, look, there's the woods. That's right. And the house is just beyond. Let's stop right here for a minute. Uh-huh. Ah, beautiful, isn't it? Yes. Quiet. Yes. Peaceful. Uh, I always thought I'd, I'd like to be buried here when the time comes. Yeah, I'd like that too, when my time comes. Oh, I, I thought you wanted a crypt in the cemetery with shells. <laughs> no, that was a crazy idea. I'd like to be buried here. Uh, or maybe, just maybe, I won't be buried at all. Well, what did you have in mind exactly? Maybe, Ma. I'll just wander off into the woods by myself. And no one will ever find any trace of me. Not skin, or bones, or hair, or anything. Well, how can that be possible, something like that? It's the secret of the elephants, Ma. And only the elephants know. I'll be back shortly with a final thought. story has ended. Story, I can hear you ask. All right, then. Call it what you please. Call it a fantasy or a fable. Call it a parable. Call it a myth. Or, and it might be the most apt description of all, a morality play. And as with audiences of all time, you must find the moral for yourself. Our cast included William Redfield, Arnold Stang, Bryna Rayburn, and Joan Shea. Associate Director, Marlon Swing. This is Hyman Brown, producer-director, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, then, pleasant dreams.